just saw this video again of how to strive on your period. And I am so sick of it. I'm so sick of hearing it. I'm so sick of the advice of, oh, this is how you can get up your energy levels and this is how you can do all of these things and maintain doing all of these things and do your crazy workouts and do your crazy things there and achieve and go, 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 go. And at the same time, you have these videos from the same people how to step more into your feminine energy and da 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 this is this i i no mm -mm. time out time out i had enough of this so i am starting this new series of cycle thinking because every woman out there needs to know about their cycle because that is the only way the only way that you're not going to burn out that you're not going to be depressed that you are radiating your feminine energy and that you're flowing effortlessly in your feminine energy because it is in you naturally okay more water to hydrate because it is hot in the caribbean i'm telling you it is so hot and it is raining again we're, we're deep into into raining and hurricane season so in this video i'm going to cover masculine and feminine energy then we are covering your energy levels throughout your cycle so your follicular in your ovulatory in your luteal in your luteal and in your menstruation phase i will have all of the chapters like linked up here so you can skip forward to whatever you want to see and no i am no doctor but there's a lot of information out there and i have consumed it all because i have made it my mission to live in tune with my cycle and not seeing it as the enemy anymore but to embrace it and work with it instead of working against it this is what this video will help you with let's talk energies first of all because in this video we're talking so much about your energy levels throughout your cycle i first of all want to tap in the difference between masculine and feminine energy because we have both within us at all times but because society devalues feminine energy a lot of women are living more in their masculine than they're living in the feminine energy and that is what leaves us so tired, so exhausted, and leaves us with burnout. I've been there, I have done it all, so I'm a pro in exhausting myself because I'm living too much in my masculine. So the masculine energy is linear, it is goal-oriented, it is competitive, it is static. When on the other hand, the feminine energy it is cyclical, it is process oriented, it is collaborative and it is flexible. The masculine energy is a lot of doing and the feminine energy is a lot of receiving. So in order to step deeper into your feminine energy and to balance your energy levels throughout your cycle because your energy levels change throughout your cycle, right? The masculine is daily. It is a static line. It is every day it goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up. That is how men work, but this is not how women work. We have different energy levels throughout your cycle. And I want to discuss them in detail with you because that way you can tap into them and use them to your advantage. So I, as a reference, have my iPad here right now and as a reference I'm using from Alisa Vitti in the flow. I highly, I highly recommend you reading this book, also her other books to understand, to get a basic understanding of your cycle and a deeper understanding because I'm scratching things on the surface here. but. It goes way, way deeper and she gives you all of the explanations and all of the whys and all of the things. So your follicular phase is your preparation phase. It is also your spring phase or 
the increasing moon phase. I think the easiest comparison is the one to spring. Because what do you associate with spring? Flowers are starting to bloom. You're doing a spring clean. You're starting new hobbies. You're going outside more. You're doing, right? Your energy is coming up. Everything is awakening. So your body and your follicular phase is also awakening. And your creativity is awakening and your creativity is starting to flow. And that is because your estrogen is on the rise. In this phase, you should dream big, brainstorm, initiate, prepare and plan. Research, be curious, explore, interview people, take courses, gather knowledge, gather resources and chart your strategy. Set your intentions for the month or year ahead, clarify your vision and get new projects off the ground. Fill in your planner with what you want to accomplish in the coming weeks. And one thing I want to add on this, everything you want to start, you're more likely to stick with it when you start it in your follicular phase. So when you want to start going to the gym, start going in your follicular phase. When you want to start a new creative project you never stick to, start it in your follicular phase. If you want to eat more healthy, start it in your follicular phase. You're more likely, because of this energy within you, you're more likely to stick to it than rather than starting it in your menstrual phase. Because when you start anything in your menstrual phase, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> So start everything new in your life on your follicular phase. Then comes your ovulatory phase and that is your opening up phase. It's your summer phase, it's your full moon phase. It's your goddess phase. Your ovulatory phase is your goddess phase and that's how you need to embrace this. You have the most energy throughout your cycle because your estrogen is at its highest, you're more communicative, you're more open, you're radiating more beauty in general. It is, it is beautiful. So your ovulatory phase, you should socialize and pitch ideas and be seen, talk about your plans, collaborate with others on projects schedule dates and meetings, go to lunch with girlfriends, host a party, connect with others, have important conversations. You're more likely to get your message across, you're more likely to attract people because you are having this wonderful energy around you that is just open and going out. After your ovulatory phase comes your luteal phase. And that is your work phase. That is your autumn season and your decreasing moon season. So during that phase, your progesterone is at its highest and your energy is all about completion, nurturing and tending. It is the perfect time for your deep work. So do not procrastinate on anything. It is really the time when we get things done. It is also the longest period, so you have a lot of time to get a lot of work done. Get organized. Accomplish the projects and goals that you plan during your follicular phase. Feel good about wrapping things up. Attend to your home, finances and administrative work. Do your deep work and celebrate your power. And this is so important because we're heading towards our menstruation phase, which is all about resting. So we need to complete everything before we enter into that phase, right? So that is why it is so important that during that phase, you just stay focused, you stay in your lane and you just get all of the work done. And finally comes your menstruation phase. The phase every woman is always complaining about. And I know all about the cramps and the migraines. I have them all. So I'm working on going against that by cycle syncing my food. I'm starting that. So I will let you know how that goes. Your menstruation phase is all about rest. 
So do not attempt to do all of the work. Do not attempt to do all of the heavy workouts. Do not attempt all of that. Your main priority is to rest. Just menstruation and rest goes together. Forget all the advice, forget everything else. You have done all of the work before, so now you can rest. Because all of your hormones are at its lowest, so your general energy is decreased to 70%. So you cannot expect to be to work and be full of force like you have been before. It's just not possible. <laughs> so you need to honor that. So this time is very good for evaluation and tapping into your intuition. Relax and reflect on the past month. Be kind with yourself as you review all the good things that happened throughout the month. View what you have accomplished and note any areas of your life that feel less than optimal or that need attention. It's especially important to trust your instincts during that phase. Is your gut telling you something? Spend time journaling, reviewing and noting what you might need to let go of and what you might need to shift in the coming month. Use this as a starting point for setting intentions during your next follicular phase. And that is the only job that you have to do during your menstruation. It is like the end of the year, right? But at the end of the year, we are viewing everything that has gone wrong, everything that has gone good, where we want to go, we do all the goal setting. This is exactly what you do every month during your menstruation phase, because that way you stay on track with your goals and do all of the things. So for you, it is way more important not to live month to month to month, but to live from cycle to cycle to cycle. And that is how you cycle sync your life. And instead of going from the first to the 31st, you go from your follicular phase to your menstruation phase. And that is the only cycle that you should be living in and should be working in and should be setting your goals, reviewing everything. I hope this video helps you so much. I'm very sorry about the different audio. <laughs> I forgot to turn off my microphone halfway and all of the rain that is happening outside. It gives me a bit of a calming. I hope it gives you. So excuse me for that, but I hope this video gives you so much value that you really do not care. <laughs> And it really helps you to step into what you need to do to live more in tune with your cycle, to not work against your cycle, but to embrace it and to conquer your life at its best. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. What did you think of this? Did this help you out? Any concerns? Just let me know. Remember to read the book in the flow. It is very, very good for you to tap in deeper into your cycle life. I wish you all the best. See you in the next one.